So how can I use this? Well, I'm going to go with this formula that I've established, right? I see that I'm going to begin with a power of 4. Do notice, by the way, remember I said, like, this guy here, that's that UV term at the front. We didn't deal with integration by parts in the context of definite integrals before, but it's not that complicated to include boundaries. All that would mean is if you are not just integrating u dv, but if you're integrating from a to b, like so, right? What you've got here, this uv part, it's already been integrated, so it needs to get boundaries, right? Does that make sense? Just like if you integrate something else, it should get the boundaries minus a b of v. To you. So this is just a slight extension of the regular integration by parts formula. It's just that everything gets boundaries, including this one. It's been evaluated at some points. Okay? So that's going to come into play here. What's going to be my first line? 1 over 4. four. Right? I identify my power here because this is, this is I4 from 0 to pi 2. Okay? And then what am I getting in here? So I'm going to integrate sine x cos cubed, right, from 0 to power 2, yeah, plus, what comes next? At 3 times... 3 lots of i... 2. 4 minus 2, yeah. Done. Uh, I suppose, strictly speaking, I should put the boundaries here too, 0 to power 2, okay. I can move further through this. I can actually evaluate this first thing. Let's have a look. When you evaluate it at pi 2, what do you get? Well, because of this cosine term here, right, that's just going to become 0. When I evaluate it at 0, you still get 0 because of the sine term, right? How convenient. Uh, what happens over here? I've got 3 lots of what? Okay, so I, I now return back. So this is I2 now. So instead of 1 over 4, I'll have... A uh, half, yeah, is that okay? Times, times what? Okay, I'm evaluating uv cos... X. Careful. This is i2, right? So 2 minus 1, yeah. From 0 to power 2. What trails off on the end here? Plus, this is i2, right? So this is 2 minus 1. Minus one of i zero. Close back. Okay. Yep. So far, so good. So a quarter. This disappears. I've got now three lots of. I'm going to have a lot of nested brackets in here. I'm now ready to integrate this to evaluate it. But just like it happened here, zero. this guy's going to be zero, right? I'm just going to zero take away zero. Zero. What happens here? Well, this is two minus one, which is one lot of i naught. What's I naught? Cos x. This is the integral of cos to the power of 0, x, which is just 1, one right? So in fact, the integral of 1 dx is just x, right? From, I actually should have written, I, I forgot to write it here, from 0 to pi on 2. Yes, 0 to pi on How's it look? Yeah. OK. I'm ready now. I can actually evaluate all this thing. No more integration required because I've done the last integral there. So I've got a quarter times three times a half, which is three on eight, times what? What actually happens when I do This is pi on two take away zero. Yeah? Which looks to me like three pi on 60. Okay? So you can see, what would I have had to have done had I not established the recurrence relation, right? I would have had to have done integration by parts this time, and then this time, and then out it would come, okay? But clearly, because just like in our original um, e to the x sine x, sine x example, right? You're using the same kind of integration by parts. It's almost like, you know, you prove one pair of triangles similar, and you're like, I've got all these other pairs that I need to do, but I'm using exactly the same proof. I'm using all the same angles, whatever. So you say, similarly. And similarly, and similarly, and you don't have to rewrite it, you don't have to re-go through the mechanics, you just use them over and over again. Okay? And that's the strength of a recurrence relation.